Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! Five minutes before 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. A pretty important day in the world of horses because tomorrow is the Kentucky Derby. This is Horse Sense with the Equine Alliance of Marion County. We've got a panel of horse experts here in the studio, and your phone calls are always important on these most of these shows anyway. Uh, the number here is 622-9622 if you would like to call in. And boy, we got a big panel there. No, oh, no call in today? Okay. <laughs> Too much to do. Okay, I apologize. Uh, and uh, and see, good morning, everybody. How you all doing? Very morning. good, very good. Good to see all of you. Hi, Larry. Is it a big day today for everybody? It's today big... is the Kentucky Oaks, and tomorrow is the Kentucky Derby, and hopefully we've got a Kentucky Derby trainer calling in here in just a couple minutes. I'll keep my eye on the line. Jose Garofalo, yeah. He's got a, a Florida bred named Wildcat Red in the race. Very, very exciting. We're very excited for him. And here's Wildcat Red sitting in my lap here today. Ah, so that's what we want to root for, bet on, and, and all that, right? Well, there's 20 of them, uh, so maybe 19 <laughs> now. I heard one might be a late scratch, but there were three Florida breads in. I believe there's two still now, and a number with Florida Connections that trained here. Ah, okay. And today you're doing a special second show, right? Yes. <laughs> Make yes. sure I got that right. We yeah? are? Okay. <laughs> I wasn't sure all week long. I wasn't sure. But, yeah, but, but Karen's that is doing one uh, from 10:30 to 11. So okay, okay. Sponsored with um, for her through her business, Farm Tours of Ocala. So she's going to be continuing the Derby coverage. Yeah, we'll have uh, Frankie Lovato on a jockey actually. All right, excellent. Calling in. excellent. Oh, calling in. Okay, okay, mm-hmm. great. Um, so what do what do we do today with today's event, the Kentucky Oaks? What do we learn? The Kentucky Oaks actually is what they call the Phillies Day. So it's uh, the Ladies Day. So some of the, the, the Phillies that work in a race in the Kentucky Derby will, <coughs> will have a wonderful race card today, and they'll be racing in the, they say the Phillies with the Lilies. So the Phillies are racing for the Lilies. But it's a full day of ladies' activities. Wear pink is, is the, the theme. Uh-huh. Um, it, is, it supports breast cancer awareness. But it's just a, a big, big day at Churchill Downs to get ready for the next big day. Okay. All right. Excellent. And, and uh, do you want to set us up for what we're doing next here? I don't well, wanna... we're going to wait for Jose to call in, but in the meantime, we got some stuff to kind of fill in on. We also have uh, Tommy and Lori Fackler calling in. They're the breeders of Dance with Fate, and um, Tommy's was a jockey himself. And then when he retired from that, he came to Ocala, started you know galloping horses for people, and married his wife Tommy, who's um, come is from the Cassie family who's uh-huh. been here forever and ever, a big part of OBS. And uh, they got married and they have their own farm called Best of Luck Farm, which I think it's aptly named now because they right, right. they bred this mare um, to a stallion named Two Step Salsa that stands at Getaway Farm here in Ocala. And um, he won the bluegrass stakes a mm-hmm. um, couple of weeks ago and made it into the Derby and they still own the mare and have her in fall. I talked to him right before we went on air, and she they're in between Lexington and Louisville because they had to stop and see the mayor on the way there. So yeah, right, right. they get to go as breeder and cheer for... The, that poor horse is going to carry a lot of people because <laughs> the Facklers have a lot of friends. They're wonderful, wonderful people. So... And that's we, that's and, who I'm rooting for. And do we have a lot of caravans going going out, or, or are most people staying here? What's what's happening? Yeah, I think there's a lot of the people that are connected to it, like Jose. He's at the track, so that's probably why he's calling in a little bit late. Okay. And um, so a lot of the people that we're going to be calling in, like the, the owner of Two Step Salsa, he's in the air right now. He's so excited because oh, wow. this horse, Two Step Salsa, is a second-year stallion. They're a second-year crop of, of, of foals, and so he's got a derby contender, and it's very exciting for him even, and he's 
not even owning that horse. So it's it's a lot of people in the air right now trying to get to those races. A lot of people on the ground driving, uh, checking out the horses. Like like she said, the Facklers are, are congratulating that mare um, because now she's got a Derby contender. So it's um, really heartfelt. A lot like she said, a lot of people riding on the the backs of some of these horses because they're so excited to have a horse in the Kentucky Derby. Do you know early on when you're training a horse that it could be a contender? Do you know? No, it's usually, I mean, horses have a talent level that after, after you've trained for a certain number of years, you know, they they show you, you know, something special. Maybe a certain breeze uh-huh, uh-huh. that you're doing one morning and you're like, oh. Oh, really? He's kind of starting to put it together, you know. But the really great ones, they, they show themselves fairly early. And do you know just by watching or just by by knowing? Or do you have to have a stopwatch to know for sure? Or Well, you always have a stopwatch and they twirl it around and around incessantly in their hands <laughs> on their string, um, all trainers. But, um, you know, it's just like anything else if you're a dog judge or you know whatever i mean you, you get to where yeah you just know after a certain number of years what a horse is supposed to move like and you know there's things like how easy he does it you know whether the jockey had to ask him for his life or he just went on and did it he came back didn't act like anything really bothered him he oh, wasn't wow. tired oh, you know yeah. just a lot of little things that'll tell you I know uh, Karen Dunn, who also is based here with Wavertree Stable um, in the Ocala area, he sells a lot of horses, and so he looks at a lot of horses that go into the sales, and one of the comments he made is that you can tell an athlete when they're young, those horses, because they have an athletic walk, they have an athletic appearance, just like if you're walking down the street, you can go, gosh, that guy has an athletic walk, that's Michael Jordan, you know, and so you can tell a baseball player a lot, you, you, mm-hmm. know, you see y- y- young people when they're playing sports, but if they're not playing sports, you can still recognize an athletic person. It's the same thing with horses. There's just something about their walk, at least in his case, that that they notice. And they say that young horse has some potential. Also, as early as when they're in the fields. And Crystal, you know, has broodmares, and she can attest to this. You see the young horses um, actually kind of run and compete in the fields, if you will. So sometimes people like to watch them interact with other horses to see what future champion is there already kind of performing, if you will. Okay, I don't. I don't want to interrupt. If you have something you want to mention, I don't want my dopey questions to get in the way of, no, of no, good no, stuff. No, yeah. no, no, no. Uh, I just brought some kind of fill-in stuff. We we are down to nineteen in the field. Oh, um, for sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so who so who got the bad news? Opportunity had to scratch because of uh-huh. a bruised foot. Uh-huh. So and that was a Baffert trained horse. And so you have horses that were on the what we call the A and E, the also eligible, uh-huh. and uh, um, a Florida bred named Pablo Del Monte. Um, who was trained by Wesley Ward is was in and the trainer when they announced that he was in the trainer was like "Mm, I'm not sure he's ready they're going to wait and run him in the Preakness the trainer doesn't think he's ready right now you know he might be a work behind Uh or something uh so they've elected not to run in the Derby um, for the benefit of the horse and they're going to run in the Preakness so we're we're at 19 now and still 19 that's a lot you don't usually have horses horse races with 19 you know 15 16 17 is a big field so one of the things with the kentucky derby um more than probably any other race is the first part of it the break everybody finding their positions you know because some horses are breaking from the 19 hole way out as opposed to the horse that's on the rail you know he's got to squirt out of there and use more speed the horse on the outside has to use more speed he's got to try and get in because the further out you are the more more distance distance, you're traveling exactly so a lot of it has to do with the beginning of the race so everybody's jockeying (laughs) pun intended for their for their best position and most horsemen are just like sitting there waiting hoping that everybody gets that break and get down the back stretch and and uh an orderly fashion and nobody gets yeah, it's, around. it's kind of like the race within the race. And one of the things that we saw on Wednesday that was on TV on NBC was the draw. And what that means is each horse is getting into the position in the gate that it's going to have, so they draw it randomly. So that is a big deal. People aren't pins and needles, and, it, and you sit there and go, but why are these people worried about the number their horse gets? And like Crystal said, you don't want to be in hole one, two, or three because you're going to get pinched, or your horse has to have some speed to get out there. So your horse has to be a racehorse the moment he steps out of the gate and be prepared. And like she said, the jockeys are 
are, are kind of figuring out that best spot. And so sometimes a jockey literally changes strategy three jumps out of the gate based on how quickly his horse got out of the gate. So hmm. you think about the split decisions that jockeys are making, and I'm sure Karen later in her portion of the show at 1030 will talk about that with the jockey, about the types of decisions they have to make during the race. And like Crystal said, there's there's one through 20, or today one through 19. There had never been a horse win by the, from the 20 hole. It was just so hot, much to overcome to be way on the outside. You knew you weren't going to get a good position. You're going to be four, five, six horses wide, maybe in the second flight of horses, which is kind of the groups of horses sometimes as they line up around the track on hmm. the first um, bit on the back stretch. And so one horse did that, and that was Big Brown. But he was a monster. He was a big horse, and he was just a huge champion, and he just gobbled up ground. So each horse is a little different. Dance with Fate, the, the Florida bred that, that the Facklers will talk about in a little bit, amazing horse, big, broad-chested horse, looks bigger than his age. He's a three-year-old, and he looks like a more mature, older horse. Uh -huh. So he's going to have that, hopefully, that ability to get out there and, and reposition himself if he doesn't break well. He's breaking from uh, a good hole. He's breaking from, I believe, the five hole. He's like, yeah, um, he's and so he's, he's sitting in a really best situation right now. So when he breaks from that gate, um, if, if something were to happen and another horse come over on him or anything, he can recover. Why? His bluegrass stakes was the most impressive race um, for the prep races because he was stuck in traffic, which means there were other horses all around him. He finally broke free. He was six wide. So he's, you know, running a whole nother race there to come around the other horses wow. in the bluegrass. When he did that, then he surged ahead. And not only that, he pulled away to win by a length and a quarter. Doesn't sound like a lot, but to run a race that early in the year um, at a mile and an eighth and then get that, it shows that he has the stamina to finish the race, which the Kentucky Derby is a mile and a quarter. So you'll see a lot of horses that look like when they come around that turn oh he might make it he might make it but then mm -hmm. you see them kind of sputter out like they've kind of run out of gas and that's kind of what happens sometimes in the derby i know yeah. there's there's a lot of things that um we wished and we will have a much bigger um presentation of this next year because there's so much about the derby that people watch it on tv and they see the big hats and all the people and the right. celebrities mm -hmm. there's so much more behind the grandstands um, if you go on our web or uh, facebook site horse sense i posted a deal this morning about um one of the grooms of the horses that are in the racetrack she's spent her whole life on the back side of the racetrack has two children that have grown up that's the way she supported oh, really? them and it's and they have a little video on there of her talking about you know how excited she is for this horse and you know of course she's like most women she starts talking about something she cares about she gets kind of teary but people don't realize that the 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 grooms that are with these horses have been with them probably their entire racing career so far because on the back stretch you usually have three to six depending on how many horses there are in a stable three to six per groom um, it gets smaller as the stable gets bigger and the horses get better. Sometimes one groom will only take care of three head of horses. So it's it's almost like their their child. I mean, they spend 24-7 yeah. yeah. with them. You know, this woman goes to work at 4.30 and doesn't go home until 6 or 7 o'clock at night. So wow. when you're watching the Derby, you know, we want to want you to think about, you know, the people who train the horses and then the uh, the grooms that take care of them and then then there's the hot walker there's people who just once the horse is back and this lady's taking care of her other horses there's somebody who just walks that horse around the shed row to cool it out and it's the same person who walks that horse every day and then you've got the jockeys you know what are they doing during the day to prepare for this race you know that's that's another whole aspect there's so many people who go into accomplishing the ability for those horses to walk onto the racetrack. There's all this backstory that goes with these horses. And as Crystal says, um, she talks about the people. And what's interesting, I'll just give you an example with the Florida bred Wildcat Red. Notice how I say Florida bred a lot. I'm with the Florida thoroughbred breeders and owners. <laughs> but Wildcat Red is very interesting because his trainer, Jose Garofalo, started out as a young trainer in Venezuela. And he came to Miami and worked uh, down in South Florida in uh, training for many, many years. And so it's very exciting. Um, he's Venezuelan. His jockey is from Mexico. Luis 
Luis Saez. Then um, also the other connection with the horse's breeder is Xavier Moreau. He's French and he lives here in this area. So it's amazing to think it's like a melting pot of people yeah, from yeah. all over the world that dream and aspire to win the, the world's most legendary horse race, the Kentucky Derby. And as Crystal talks about the preparation, all the people behind it, she talks about the, the breeding of the horse, um, their pedigrees and how you breed a champion. All of those things really matter, but there's another thing called racing luck with a large field of horses. So it's not a race that you can buy, it's a race you can dream about, and you will see people tearing up in that winter circle. Even when I'm talking about it now, I'm getting goosebumps because mm -hmm. it's a dream of so many people to be there and not just to be there to win it. And then there's so many people that aspire to even just have one horse that could potentially get there. Well, the, the breeders in Kentucky with the, the Phippses. They've spent millions and millions and millions of dollars. They have the best bloodlines that money can buy. They've only won it once, just recently. Mm. <laughs> but there was a gentleman that owned um, a horse named Little E.T. Uh, my husband had known him since he was a kid, and that's all he ever wanted to do. And he, he finally ended up buying Little E.T. for a couple hundred thousand after he'd win a couple of good stake races, and, and he wins the Kentucky Derby. So... It's the myth that it's only for the rich is absolutely not true. You know, Lori and um, and Tom, and Tommy. You know, I mean, they're Lori's a um, a nurse, a PA, and Tommy was oh, a wow. jockey and a gallop guy, and mm. they've worked and got their little farm and you know got this mare. And, and Two Steps also was a new stallion. He didn't have any big progeny out there, you know, but it was what they could afford, and you know they breed to this stallion and and here they and they fold the mare them out you know fold the mare out and raise it up and you know there's just this whole history before that horse ever stop, steps onto the racetrack wow. that's really what makes you know i'm not from kentucky but when they start playing that song tomorrow <laughs> i know people in kentucky that are dear dear friends of mine and i know what it means to them and every year i can't sing the song without you know, getting a sure, little teary sure, because yeah. there's a lot of heart and soul and hard work that goes into that race. Everybody's a handicapper on Derby Day. <laughs> and it's it's fun. There's there's all these horses that are born every year. So you're only eligible once in your life to be in that derby. Then mm. you have to qualify. Mm. So out of all the thoroughbreds that were that were born that year, then you've got to qualify by the points so just to get in is, is quite a feat just to get entered absolutely yeah and then once you're entered it's another pretty good feat to make it to the gate that day i had some high hopes for opportunity like mike smith and they, so he was the he was the jock up on that horse so i thought he was maybe a pretty strong pick uh it's not often that the favorite wins and you can bet the baby uh you can bet the derby lots of different ways so i think maybe there's been one winner uh come out of the first hole something like that yeah it's very i, I you know, think there I mean, is like one and one out of the 20 hole right. and, and, and they he, run in two gates larry i mean if you if uh, the people out there don't know you know if they if they're watching the derby or go to a lot of races a lot of regular races have six eight you know horses like that certainly if you get a card that's got 12 horses uh Right. In a race, that's that's a big race, but the Derby's always set up for twenty because that's what'll fit across the track, and it takes two gates to get that done. Wow! The second one's called the Auxiliary Gate, and the Derby's been limited to twenty since nineteen seventy five, and it's the it's recently changed on how you can get into it because it went to a point system. So there's thirty four designated races that have points. There are stake races that have points to them, and the horses that have a certain number of points that and you have to run in those races to be able to accumulate the point system to get to get in there so it's um it's it, it's there's no easy path to get there you have to follow a pretty a pretty stringent thing i think we might have jose on the line he said he got caught up and so i think he's calling in now i believe i see the number for, that you gave me uh, on the screen here so uh I, I believe this is jose good morning is that am i right yeah, yeah, this is Jose Call is speaking. How are you? Good morning. Where are you? Yes, yeah, so, I'm sorry I called a little bit late, but uh, I've been busy this morning, and this is uh, madness here in the morning because <laughs> the, it's the Oaks Day today. How's your horse looking, Jose? This is Tammy. Okay, how are you? How, everything, everything good? The locks, 
the, the horse looked fantastic. Uh, he trained this morning very good, very nicely. I took him to the gate uh, for schooling in the morning, and he he looks very good, very sharp for the race. So I hope uh, it's going to do good. How are you feeling? What are the emotions that you have now that you're up there and feeling it for the first time? Well, I'm excited, but uh, at the same time, uh, with my feet on the ground, working hard, taking uh, attention to every detail before the race, and very optimistic with the horse because the horse is, has been doing everything in, in perfect in perfect shape. So, so I'm very optimistic. I'm I'm I'm, I'm very happy to 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 live this experience. It's something that. Uh, um, I dream all my life, and and I'm here. I'm living the dream, but at the same time, with the feet on the ground, working hard. I've got one more question for you because I think we've got another caller coming in. But let me ask you: How many staff and how many Venezuelans are up there rooting for this horse? Oh, the whole country. Twenty <laughs> <laughs> million. And half of yeah, South Florida, huh? Yeah, everybody's been calling me. Um, um, my horse is on the, the, on, the, on the cover of the newspapers down there. They send me all the pictures of the, of the, of the newspapers today. And uh, it's, 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 it's nice because the whole country is rooting for us. Well, congratulations. Thank you for calling in. We've actually got one of the uh, ho um, people that bred a horse that are going to be calling in here shortly. But we want to thank you so much, Jose. This is Jose uh, Garofalo. Thank you for having me at the program. Wait, got and, uh, oh, wait, we've got one more question for you, Jesus, before you okay. go. And again, or, or Jose, and again, this is Wildcat Red. And we've got one question here from Mark Sheffitt with the committee. Hang on. Uh, maybe okay. just a couple of real quick things, Jose. Uh, I'm, I'm curious. Uh, whoa, I'm curious to know. Uh, what's the weather like up there today, and what what's the track rated at uh, today for the Phillies? Well, the, the 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 weather here is perfect. In the morning, it was in the, the high forties, mm, very very sunny sky, no no rain in the forecast, and uh, and the track is gonna be fast for today and for tomorrow, I guess. <laughs> there there is no rain on the on the forecast. Okay, which is good. Good. Thank you. What would the perfect scenario be for Wildcat Red in the race tomorrow? What would you kind of hope to see without giving your game plan away? Well, um, all I need is a is a is a clean trip. If I, if I can stay, if if I can stay the first half half a mile of the race, or or the feet, or the first five eighths of the race between the 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 three liters of the of the race, I'll be happy. I'm, I'm going to be very conservative about the speed. I'm going to try to avoid the speed duels. But uh, the best case scenario will be to be in the top of the stretch, right on the lead. It sounds very if, good. If we hit if we, if we hit the stretch uh, on the lead, we, we will have a very good chance to win the race. Good luck. Yeah, good luck. Good luck. Thank yeah. you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you very much. And your other caller is on the other line. Thanks, Jose. Thanks so much. So, good morning. Uh, you're now on the air. Thank you for calling. Yes, this is Lori Fackler from hey, Best of Luck Farm. Hey, Lori. It's Crystal. How are you? I'm great. How are you? And and Tommy's there? He, he's here. Who's driving? <laughs> he, he's yes, he's driving. <laughs> we, we just left Lexington on the way to Louisville. And you stopped to see your mayor today. We stopped to see our mayor. Okay, good. Just and we've told our listeners a little bit ahead of time that um, that you and Tommy bred uh, dance with fate. And you still own the mayor. That um, that you had stopped to to give her a pet and hug and tell her about her Thank boy. Her. <laughs> yes, we, yes, we did. <laughs> so tell her. And hopefully, that'll bring us more luck. <laughs> tell, tell our listeners, um, just like with his win in the bluegrass, what what was that like for you guys to watch him win the bluegrass, knowing that you were probably getting ready to go to the Derby? It was very thrilling. Um, we've been in contact with the trainer through his campaign, and that's what he was always shooting for. Um, and he, he stepped up and performed very well. It was exciting seeing him in the back. And then when he made his move, it was very, very impressive. So that made it all the more exciting for us. Well, we were. I was talking to a, a mutual friend of ours yesterday that was in our office, Bert Pilcher. And he said he called you <laughs> directly after the race and you told him that you couldn't breathe, that you'd have to call him back. <laughs> <laughs> I did. It, it was quite exciting. 
Well, e- even when you're hopeful and that happens and it happens in that manner, it makes it so much more for us because we're such a small time breeder. Kind of shows that even the little guy can do it once in a while. And how many mares do you guys have, Lori? We probably have about um, eight or ten between ourselves and partnerships. Okay. And um, I was telling everybody that uh, Tommy was a, a jockey and then went on to, you know, when he retired, become an exercise rider. And, and you guys bought your farm, which is so aptly named Best of Luck Farm. <laughs> um, yeah. And how, how long have you guys had your farm? We, we've had it about 22 years. Um, and we, when we met, my father used to train riders, um, jockeys, so that's how we met, and we've been together for quite some time and did a lot of traveling and settled down to do the farm. And we actually, the name comes from half his family and mine because our old farm was lots of luck, and he, his grandparents were best, so we just added that, and it's been very, very lucky for us. Oh, good. So years. what do you think, What just tell our listeners a little bit about, well, I was trying to tell them uh, the backstory of before a, st- a horse steps onto the racetrack. What do you think your next 24 hours is going to be? What are you going to be doing? Uh, well, we're actually on the way to the backside to go see um, Dance with Fate um, and, and talk with the owners, and hopefully the trainer will still be there because we haven't seen him since we sold him in April. And they say he's quite impressive, so we'll do that. And then we're going to spend the day at the Oaks with some friends and clients and then just get prepared and ready for the big day tomorrow. Well, okay, do us a favor. When you get into the barn, um, take a picture with you and Tommy next to the stall with Dance and send it to us so we can get it on our website. (laughs) Okay, I will do that. Uh, yeah, we want to follow you guys, so you gotta you gotta uh, inst- uh, take pictures and send them to us because we're all going to be following you. Yep, we've got a okay. <clears throat> we've got a Twitter. We can put it on if you'll put it up somewhere where one of us can get to it and we can tag it. We'll put it on Twitter and we'll get it out there. We'd like to keep up. Okay, and I understand the mayor decided on him today. He's voting for Dance for Fate. And his bet, the mayor of Ocala. Right. Yes, he is. I wanted to mention that to you. There's a the friendly wager, and we're hoping that we'll be bringing bourbon home to uh, <laughs> uh, Marion County and celebrating um, with uh, Dance with Fate's win. I hope so, too. All right, Lori, Tommy, good luck. Uh, you're going to be carrying a lot of friends with you up there, so we're rooting for you. Thank you so much. All right. Bye-bye. Yeah, right, bye. Uh, thank you for what you didn't know. We're going to do another another show like this in about a half hour, right? Yep, we yes. are. Mm-hmm. Yep, with Karen Grimes. And, um, and there'll be a lot of uh, kind of trivia stuff on there. And she's going to give away a, a trip for tickets for two to wow. her farm tours of Ocala. Oh, if you nice. want to get behind the gates, which is her her kind of motto that she goes by and, and uh, get – really get some up close and personal experience uh, with the horses in Ocala. Listen to Karen's show and win some tickets. Well, your passion is definitely contagious. Thank you all of you for what you do for us. Okay. We uh, will take a little break and uh, Kelly Hart is up next with Ocala Magazine Radio and then in a half hour we'll continue our coverage of the Kentucky Derby. Karen Grimes will be hosting that segment. We'll be right back. Thank you. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOC.